Okay, um, here's Jeffrey McCabe. You're at Sophia Tremolos in Hollywood, Hollywood Hills, California. And we have a stock Charvel set up with a traditional locking nut, bolt through, non-locking tuners, beautiful finish from Seymour Duncans and a Floyd Rose. These guitars are particularly interesting because they have a really great, huge tremolo block. It's really opened here, which we've kind of favor. Uh, so far, we've put in our copper springs and copper claw because it changes the way the electricity flows in the ground pattern. Other than that, the guitar is basically stock. And so we have it set up and it's in tune, it's intonated, it's coming back in tune every time. You'll hear a little variations. It sounds like a pretty cool Floyd. Um, to my ear, um, the upper harmonics of the Floyd are not as um, worked out or aligned. And I think you can hear it in the metal. Um, I played Floyds for a long time before I started working on my own project and clearing up the highs seemed really important to me. Um, in fact, for a while it was called Coherent Sound and Light because I had the idea of making the vibrations coherent and coherent light is a laser, but there's no word for sound. So when I hear this, I, I am very aware of that. I also hear that when I strum, it kind of warbles a little bit. And if you're strumming, and because of that and the metal, it has a little bit of a clang. It's not a kerrang like a Les Paul. And they have, they're different. And they're beautiful. I love them. I've played them for years. And it comes back very cleanly. And what we're going to do is take the Floyd out, put one of our locking nuts in. We're going to put a 292 in it and a drop tuner, which means that you can go to E to D um, and back again with a little side lever here fits in the pocket. And because when you drop the lever, it changes the overall tension of the springs, we have our dual stabilizer set up so that when you flip it back and forth, the base plate stays within about five cents. There's a couple other acoustic advantages to it, and we'll talk about that as soon as we have it installed. So here we have the bench, and we're just gonna do a standard deinstall. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is take the locking nut The next thing I do, the way I usually do, is take the tension off the guitar, flip it over with the arm, moving the tone box forward. It takes the tension off of the springs. It's easier to remove and put them in. It's also part of the technique we'll use for the global tuner of rocking the tremolo to ease the tension of the springs. I'm going to take the... Um, string retrainer off as well. The, all the Sophia headpiece tuner locking nut lines include a built-in string tree, uh, as well as having individual string locks, the purpose of which um, are particularly nice for headless applications or more creative string um, loading. This is a top loading nut, so I'm just gonna get in there and take the screws out. And we'll use the same screws for the replacement nut. Here you can see that there's a, um, a shim that was uh, used for this. We probably will add shims for it because this would be a slightly different. And I just want to fine tune a nice action. Um, this setup, 
I'm using shims because I checked earlier what I really need for this setup. And I'm also cheating because I'm using Sophia shims. Um, we use them on our nuts or our guitars as well. So I have to be a little careful getting everything lined up. But I pre-measured this and this was really nice. This is uh, one of our um, locking nuts. Um, we call this the micro, it has individual string locks. You can lock through the top, which is gonna be necessary here, or through the back, and it has a uh, removable nut. And we offer it in 12R, 16R, and 20R, and brass or stainless steel. We're gonna use stainless steel on 16 here. Or 12, we think it's 12, sorry. Good, so now we have the nut installed. We're gonna put a, a Sophia in. This is the one we're gonna build on the guitar. We've, uh, this is all natural stainless steel. It has a drop tuner lever on it. These are full range macro tuners. The tuning range is uh, over a quarter inch, which is enough for be a, a headless guitar and certainly won't run out of room here ever. Um, so it's ample in that sense. You can string it through the back and lock it or put a cut end through here about three-eighths of an inch and lock. Uh, oversized strings are handled that way. And we're improving this all the time. We have a, uh, a keep eye, a clean, keen eye on evol evolving the designs. And so we have a lot more coming. It's an interesting bass plate and design for me. When I was talking earlier about the acoustic uh, qualities of the Floyd, in the way I heard it, uh, these instruments or designs were developed in view of that particular obs observation. Here, every body is exactly the same. Every knob is exactly the same. And what happens is the likelihood of this resonating at the same frequency this does or this or any of them will bring the instrument alive much more like a tuning fork. We're able to do that with a solid radius with a set of tiers, which means you have string to bass plate to riser post. So it's very direct sounding. And because of this tuning fork like um, connection, it tends to clean up the overtones. So when I hear this, the overtones are very clear. And um, oh, the, the overtones are the most important part because the mind, having heard them, will create the lower tones if they're not present, just like a bass guitar on an old AMM radio, AM FM radio. Uh, here you can see the bottom where standing eyes are, uh, are stabilizer pins. They come in three basic sizes as well as an adjustable one. On the back side you can see this with the thumb wheel. A lot of people don't understand what this is. It's um, been, been around before, but the idea is on a locking tremolo and you set it up correctly and it goes out of tune you're normally wanting to choose two or three strings to bring it back. Most of the time, you can turn it over and move this a little bit, and you'll find the tremolos come back into position, and those two or three strings that rattle a little bit are coming right back in. So tuning a double locking tremolo is very fast with the quick tune wheel. It's great on headless guitars as well. We also feel that the combination of bell brass, cast stainless steel brass, uh, and these highest quality materials affect the tone too, that there's an alchemy or a recipe for making a great tremolo, just as you might have a cap, maple cap on a mahogany or some other material in the body. So we're very interested in those combinations and we've been lucky uh, that this combination turned out so well. Uh, I hope you like hearing it. Here, the design is a drop and fit. The spacing is there. There's a little bit of give and take for you can use for over the years. It drops into typical space like this. This one has to go down and back a little bit, and there you are. You'll see the tuners all fit in the space provided by this manufacturer, the Charvel. The drop tuner goes a little bit further, but this drops down pretty nicely. So aside from this range, when it's set up, you have pretty good upward range. You have floating tremolo, ease of the drop detuning, and a harmonically developed design and alchemical materials. In addition, we have a no wobble arm, 
It uses a collet and we just made another development and it pretty much keeps its settings no matter what you do. We also use locking riser posts, but we'd have to replace the inserts to do that. So for this test, we will just use the same risers, the stock risers we got on the uh, Charvel. The one thing that you need to know about upgrading is the 292 is the upgrade for the Floyd Rose. And we call it the 292 because the distance between the center line of the stud here and here is 2.915 inches. The same width as a tunematic, Gibson tunematic. So we took the 2.15 and rounded up to 2.9, I'm sorry, 2.915 rounded up to 2.92. So the 292 fits this. The other, so that's always taken care of. You never have to think about it. The routes match, uh, they're essentially an upgrade. The thing that's really interesting that people don't always know about, and it varies, the first uh, Floyds sat above the body and used like a fender-like length in their tone block. Um, then there was recesses and the thickness of the body with other manufacturers varied the size of the block. This one, it says very conveniently, it's a 32, which means it's 32 millimeters running from this spring and clamp mechanism to the tip here. This hold this plate and this spring, uh, this plate reinforces holding this spring to hold the tuners up. It's about one and a half millimeters, but the size is 32, comprising a total of about 33.5. On our system, in order to keep the standardization making it really easy, this is considered a 32 millimeter size. We also use a slightly different design. We have an uh, intonation plate extender, and that's two millimeters. So the Floyd Rose is about one and a half, ours is two, so ours tend to be about a half a mil or 20 thousandths of an inch, slightly longer. Uh, no one's ever complained, it's never, it's never been a problem. But the sizing is the sizing, so a 32 from your original is gonna be a 32 here. And that's whether it's a global tuner or a block tuner or anything that we offer, you're with a 32 millimeter size, so it fits in there and the springs align. When I, when I put these bridges in, we spent, this one is already set up. It has our extended uh, pins in it, and the global tuner can extend up to about 75 or 09 to establish where it sits so that the base plate itself is going to be 90 degrees to the riser, which we call initial position or the zero point. This is loose, but it has rails, and the springs operate to pull up to minimize the amount of parts that we have on it. Further, this can be adjusted with a wrench to tighten the firmness of each contact pin. In this application, we've used a little bit longer pins. We have adjustable ones as well. If I remember correctly, you always, ha you always have to have a little bit of a gap, and I don't think it required much of a gap to be in the correct position. So I'm just gonna put it here and see with a nice small gap how closely it aligns to the 90 degree position. And here it drops down at an angle. It should be sitting about there. Here it's dropping down because the stabilizers need to extend out further. So I'm gonna take that, gently lock it. Here they're still a little off and the riser posts need to come up. The riser posts do come up a little higher on the Sophia because the riser posts are aligned to the outside wings. So it makes this a little, hold it in place so that the riser posts are aligned to this rather than a little bit lower on a Floyd. So the riser posts come up to compensate it. 
and you'll see it end up being where the base plate will need to be flushed to the body in the final fitment. There. It's essentially holding in a position when it rests the body so that this is pretty much flush or angular and 90 degrees to this when that is extended that much. If I take it a little bit more with this much of a gap, it looks like it's about a perfect fit. And there you are. It sits firmly right there. So <clears throat> we call this a soft stop because it will give, but it has all the benefits of a hard stop. So you hear a definitely uh, a different type of uh, response. If you use the Sophia with a regular blast brass block like this, you get a typical trem tremolo response. If you use the stabilization, it affects the initial point. So now we know basically what the setup was required to be. Uh, I think from my experience that the riser posts have to come up a little bit more because of the wings of the Sophia. And there we are. You can check it from the side. Right here, you can see that this dimension is very good. You're seeing 90 degrees. At the, when it pops down into lightly into the position, it's very clean and out there. So the next step is to put strings on. We usually start with a spring, hold it in position. Come back here. Make sure the tremolo is in position, and it is. For me, I usually start with the, the base side. Um, helps me understand everything about the guitar better. Here we have the lock screw. If you clock, if you screw it clockwise, it locks. Counterclockwise, it does not. Here. It's all the way up. You can see the hex screw in the slot. And this point will tell you, do not use the, the tuner pin until you're better familiar with the whole mechanism. So the rule of thumb is, if this is up, don't use the knob. As we covered in other uh, videos, this plain end should make it through like any other string. Sometimes it needs to be finessed. This one went straight through. Once the string is pulled all the way through, like any other locking system, we ask you to practice locking it first before you put any tension on the string. One really nice trick about these guitars is that if I move this into this position and lock this headpiece at this position, when it's tilted forward, it's mostly slack. When this guitar bridge returns back to initial position, it's close to pitch. And so one of the advantages of having individual string locks, you can tune very quickly. Tilt the tremolo forward, lock one string, do every one. So we'll continue to do that. It's a quick tune method.
the one thing about that method is really nice. Um, when I'm stringing here, I make sure the lock's all the way out, but I also try to make it so that the lock is back as far as it can be, um, because it gives you your best ramp angle. It's hard, it's a nice trick uh, to follow for these strings. Um, using the plain end is, is great that way. Is to prepare this with a wrench, drop the tremolo down, take the slack out of the string, crimp it a little bit, just so it holds, and then lock it. And that's not a D, of course, but it's close, and it will be as we add more springs. So now that I have three on, I'm going to put another spring on the back. Should be close to D now. So anyway, a lot closer than you would be otherwise. So again, I'm just preparing this. Drop the trim down to the die, pull it through, give a kink through the string, and lock. So in each case here, these strings are not being held by the tuning pegs anymore. That's why it's also great for a headless guitar. So all the work's being done here and here. Okay, I need to tune it. I'll be right back. So I'm fine tuning the initial install. It meant getting this base plate up a little higher than the body because the wings are a little bit higher to establish the same heights for the strings. Um, and we set up, we follow the same things, just the springs on the back here so the pins would hit at the perfect spot when the guitar is completely in tune like this. And so we hit it go down, it's back. And it's working. So one of the nice things about this guitar, when you hit that tremolo, brings that upper harmonic out. And that sensitivity, it's a little noisy, I think because of the fretboard a little bit, I'll have to adjust it a little bit more, but it adds, it takes the pretension of the stabilizer and recycles it. And you can hear it come back. So part of this magic is that with these two extra contact points here, plus this, it tends to recycle the energy. So rather than having a linear die off, it recycles and you can work with it. It opens up your touch sensitivity. How much you dig into a note or back off is a lot more responsive. And I think we got pretty lucky with that. Here's the D tuna. There's D. This is the drop tuner. Drop tuner, D. The bass plate's about five cents sharp. Most people are happy with that. Back to E. So it's the only drop-in fit. The Stabilize has a drop tuner, super high quality, uh, very simple to use once it's set up, you can string and unlock, that's it. And if the guitar is a little out of tune, because it's a fulcrum tremolo, they detune in a non-linear way. So these two strings could be out of tune and everything else could be fine. You can take this, grab the arm, so it tilts the global tuner forward, and move the thumb wheel a little bit. When that happens, it brings the bass plate back into initial position. And most of the times, it corrects all the tuning. So we call this a quick tune thumb wheel. 
perfect for double locking so you don't have to go through the fine tail a bunch of time till everything mellows out to go back to a place where it was originally that you can chain achieve just by the thumb wheel. Again, I grab the arm, it takes the tension off the springs and you can turn it. Doesn't take very much. So a lot of times if it's out of tune or something, um, I can probably demo that. If I take it out of tune here, by taking some of the tension off, it should be flat. And disproportionately flat. Like um, this D is slightly flat, the A is similar. These things are set almost correct. So you would almost want to adjust one or two or three of them to bring it back. But we know that if by tilting this forward and putting it back into position, all the strings are back in tune like that. Thanks for checking in. This has been a lot of fun to show you about the Sophia, in particular the 292 for the drop-in fit and the drop tuner and how it works with our Global Tuner Pro with the pre-tension pre contact pins and the quick tune thumb wheel, making double locking tremolos and headless guitars very easy to use. It takes a second for the settlement, for the setup, but after that, you'll be super satisfied with the course that ring like hardtails and your strumming sounds without any wobble. Every note is clear and defined because it's stabilized with these four points. It sounds like Kerrang to me, and all the high frequencies are clear. So every note is better defined, intercooperates like it's meant to be in a musical instrument.